Welcome to Pop Culture Retro, which was recently voted the 15th best podcast by the residents of the Golden Years Retirement Community in Boca Raton, Florida. Each show, we'll revisit some of your favorite pop culture memories with insider and outsider perspectives. Now, please help me welcome your hosts, Ike Eisenman and Jonathan Rosen. Hello, and welcome back to part two of our Pop Culture Retro podcast. Hosted by yours truly, Ike Eisenman, and my co-host, Jonathan Rosen. Uh, we've been discussing the early days of home video and the format wars between Betamax and VHS. So I want to know, uh, tell me, when did you or your family finally dive into the home video craze? No, in, in, my, in my life, going back, I, I've, never, I, I've never owned a Betamax still in my life. I, you know, uh, but I came in, you know, toward in the, right in the middle of this, so I, uh, it was already known that Beta, I guess, was not on the way out, I guess, maybe, or not as popular. Yeah. Um, but now, I, I think I think we mentioned this before, you know, privately, or that now, or this, did I read this, that Witch Mountain became popular again because of this, because yeah, you, of the... You actually were, I was thinking it as, as you were starting to pose the question. I was so tremendously excited because Disney did choose Escape to Witch Mountain as... It was either in the first 10 or first 12 VHS commercial releases that the studio did. It was part right. of their part of their initial rollout. They chose Witch Mountain as one of the tapes. And so I was tremendously excited. And, and yeah, it did reinvigorate, uh, you know, people going back to watch it because they obviously before that there was no did, other way. You that notice, you could see did you it. notice a surge of popularity after that compared to how it was? Before then, oh, very much so, very much so. It, 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 that that kind of, that kind of exposure. Mm -hmm. I mean, because so many people rented. I mean, that's what you did, and right. and so I started like when the film first came out and was extremely popular. I was approached all the time, and then it started to kind of wane because then it's out of people's minds. You know, they, they don't necessarily right. make a connection to you. Um, but, but I was on so many other things. I was on television so much that I still got recognized all the time. And, but people didn't necessarily know what it was. And, you know, I would have to kind of run down my credits and <laughs> remind them which things they might've seen. Cause it, <laughs> it could, it could have been, you know, an episode of Fantasy Island that I had done that, you know, that summer or whatever, but that it triggers a memory of the movie. But once the VH, that VHS came out, it started happening again. And I, you know, and then Witch Mountain just got reintroduced to, I don't think it was ever, I don't think it ever went on Laserdisc because that's another, another format we, we can briefly chat about because it just sure. didn't last that long i wasn't interested i didn't buy one i didn't care that much about it um a laser disc player that i did have funny enough but <laughs> oh yeah well no i know i know a number of people believe yes. me i know more people that had a laser disc player than actually had a betamax machine i'm one of the few that i know ever actually owned one <laughs> so <clears throat> but um which mountain ended up coming out on every single media format as it uh, as it as it rolled out and it's so it was never on laser. It was on the others, but not on I laser? I don't know. I don't know 100%. Wow. I've never looked for it. It might have been. And I would have thought I would have at least bought one for myself if it had been. But mm -hmm. I don't remember. And I've not actually looked that up. But um, that reinvigorated the popularity. And then it started when, 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 um, when cable started breaking out more and more. Um, all these new formats always seem to reinvigorate those those older those older titles because because there's not enough new programming to support them and they need content they have to put content on. Um, I know when the first when the, uh, the Sci-Fi Channel first started, and of course this is a part of our retro retro, but you know Sci-Fi Channel, Cartoon Network, these these were you know they're ubiquitous in our minds now, but they were mm -hmm. brand new cable stations that um that all of a sudden they needed content so sci-fi sure. channel 
just bought up everything. I mean, Battlestar Galactica and Fantastic Journey was one of the titles. Uh, wow. the, series I, the series I did for NBC, of course, once that was off the air, everyone forgot about it. People remember it when I post things about it. Um, but when the Sci-Fi Channel came on, they ran Fantastic Journey like crazy. And that then reawakened that show. And until their mm -hmm. original programming caught up enough, it's just like how Netflix started. Netflix started playing, right. you know, movies and old sure. movies and all that stuff until their original programming caught up. And now you can't watch, you know, every practically everything that, you know, I used to like to watch is no longer on there anymore. And that's kind of how it works. But that then, yeah, really started to um, put my face back in people's minds. And, um, and it just took off. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, I mean, I have, I remember buying, I remember buying Witch Mountain in, in VHS. I remember that when it first started getting it. I don't remember the time because it was probably just to rent first, like we discussed. And I don't remember when it went on sale, but I remember that was one of the first movies that I bought when they became available. Oh, Witch wow. Mountain, because yeah, that was <laughs> I had. But then since then, I, you know, that's one of the movies that I have it in VHS. I have it in DVD and yeah. then I bought it. I bought it digitally as well. <laughs> and, and then, <laughs> and now it's on, now it is on Disney plus. So, so I, I was able to watch that. I think I, I just mentioned to you too, my, my youngest saw it for the first time uh, last week and she was enthralled by it. She was, she loved it. She watched that and then she watched return right after like there. Oh, never that's seen lovely. It before. How old is she? So she, she was, she's 15. 15. So, oh my she, gosh. Wow. Oh, that's she great. No, that's seen it. <laughs> and, uh, she I, absolutely loved it. I, I, that's, I, I love, I absolutely love hearing that. That's, that's awesome. And it still, it still amazes me how, how many younger people will en enjoy that movie and either I th identify I think she with ran, it or she ran, just... she ran to follow you on Instagram right after the thing, and as a matter of fact, right now, whenever you do post on Instagram, many times now I already see liked by her before I even get to it. So <laughs> <she> is, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, she, so she's a big fan now too. Oh, but, that's uh, awesome. Great to hear. You know, getting, getting, back, getting back to the other, I mean, one of the things that, um, and this, we are talking about the communal experience of movies, you know, just talking about VHS, the video store, going to the video store on weekends, that was such a, a great experience too. Like, you know, you had all these things all of a sudden, movies lining the walls. What am I going to watch this weekend? And, you know, it, it's, it misses something now. I know you, we talked about, and I don't like leaving the house so much either. I'm really like, <laughs> that too. And, I, and I'm not introverted at all. I used to be, but I'm not introverted at all. But there was something about going to the video store, you know, first the neighborhood video store, then Blockbuster, which was, uh, you know, unbelievable how the, the, the amount of content that they had. And they, they drove, you know, the video, the home and mom and pop video store out of business, of course. But uh, there, there was just something about it, some that special feeling that, you know, that you had that VHS, you had the conduit to this whole entertainment world, this whole movie world at your fingertips at home that I could go get anything now. You know, I wasn't limited to what the TV was showing. Oh, I could, I'm so glad you said that because I would get this massive rush, this nauseous yes. bubble of excitement planning. Yeah, planning my my weekend rentals as well, because I, I, I would do I, I would go out on Friday and, and I would rent as many as yes. <laughs> I think they even had to have limits on how many you could take out at a certain point because people just rented so many <laughs> so right. many tapes but i would get five or six and i you know i movies were not only my business but they were just my life i i loved them i've always loved them same and, you know being able to just you know yeah i mean yeah it was just it really was it really was extraordinary and um you know and i i'm i'm one of those people that that i remember seeing a television commercial and I don't know what, if this was the begin, very beginning of the streaming uh, um, concept, because, you know, that was 
you know, streaming over the internet to, for enter, entertainment was such a huge technological, another massive technological advancement that because I'm an industry person, I knew about it. And it, you know, very hearing, reading about it in the trades and how so many companies were trying to figure out how to push video through an internet cable so that you could actually watch it, especially, you know, the, the higher resolution entertainment that we have now. But there, a commercial came on for a hotel and I don't remember what the product was, but somebody was checking into this dusty motel out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and the, and the guy at the counters, they said, are you sure this is where we want to stay? And the guy said, we have every movie ever made <laughs> available for you to watch whenever you want it. <laughs> and I remember it was a joke because it wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't going on, but that got these people to stay there. And I'm probably, screwing up this memory of this commercial but that line floored me and i thought wow won't it be great one day when that can happen and <laughs> we're there we're, we are it's we're incredible. there i mean anything i want to watch i just i go to you know apple it's, or amazon prime and sure. rent it for a few bucks and it's just incredible so i have always been a massive consumer of this and i'm so glad you brought that up because yes because it was a fun experience you'd go it and you'd spend time and look and go oh god remember that yeah let's watch that one it just it was it was tremendously exciting for well, you know it's like a lot of readers that go to the library and would feel the same way yes yes but it was i mean it's we're missing something now with that experience we, i mean it's it is easy and it's so convenient that i could watch whatever i want at, at a moment like you just said at home now i could I could find the movie somewhere, mostly, not always, but I yeah, could find well, the yeah, movie on some platform at home. But now, but it was just, you know, something. A Friday night was movie night at home. I would go to the to the video store and get Friday night was always there. Saturday night was going out with friends or whatever, but Friday night was like to the video store and you'd have to go early to get the new releases because, right. they, because everyone was already getting them. Some people went Thursdays to get them, so they had them for Friday. Uh, but, you know, you got to be friendly with the people that worked at the video store. So they started knowing your tastes and they'd start to recommend, they, I, I got recommended movies that I never would have watched if it was just on my own, based on, you know, the video store clerk making recommendations yeah. to you. And it was just such a different experience. And, you know, because well, they were all neighbor, there, they were all over, like you said, especially with Blockbuster, right. there were hundreds upon hundreds of them. Sure. And you could walk through and check the spines out, pull them out, look to see if it's something you might be interested in. And yeah, I, I came across things that I just on my own that I didn't know about or probably would not have um, been exposed to if I hadn't gone through that process. But it, that right. was, yeah, really the fun part. It was, it, it was, it was a part of the process and that is missing because, you know, it's just, it's, it's, yeah, you have to, they try to feed you, you know, online or on your phone or whatever, what is available, but it's just nothing like being able to scan the to entire scan collection of movie history in front of you that is a you know that is available um, but there was a, that excitement of going like you said oh, there, just there totally. really was an excitement of being in the video store yeah and it, it is missing and blockbuster we talk i mean blockbuster was your one-stop shop i mean blockbuster had you know the movies here then you could buy the popcorn the candies over here yeah you know yeah. it was overpriced but it was like you know everything was right there yeah. for you to come back home with for the yeah. night all right i'm in, I'm in for the night you know? yep oh my gosh yeah no, I spent uh, many years uh, living that way myself, and it was great fun. Great fun. Did you see the documentary? It's it's on Netflix now. I actually purchased it when it was out on uh, Prime. The last blockbuster documentary. No. Oh, you! It is on Netflix. You must see that. It's... But I have seen the store because it's in Bend, Oregon. Right. Oh, you've been there. You've been to the store. I. I. Oh, I'm on jealous. The outside now. of it, I didn't go inside because I kind of okay. know what it looks like. But right. I've driven past because we had family that lived there for a number of years, and uh, yeah. How could so, you not have gone in? Well, <laughs> it's, uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. It just wasn't. You know, it was just fun to see it, um, but it. I don't know. I just didn't. <laughs> so no, I'm not. It's I, that, I've not to seen me, it. Oh, I'd love to go. Just to have that time machine feeling. Yeah, I. Oh, I get oh, it. You must. Get you it. must see it. It's. It's really interesting. 
it's nostalgic, interesting, and it's sad. It's just so sad, you know, you're seeing all the memories, you know, that come yeah. back of, you know, my youth, your youth of, of being in that environment. And yeah, talking. I, I know, I know what you mean. But I think also think back on and I and I picked one of the images for our, for those of people who watch this on YouTube, um, the little montage I uh, created for the beginning of our show. Yes, where I have the it's actually it's on our social media too but the little sticker that was on all the blockbuster video tapes that said <laughs> be kind rewind <laughs> Please rewind. because <laughs> part of the process see the annoying part of the process of running those videos was going home opening them all up and rewinding them all so that you could just pop it in and watch it because there's nothing more frustrating than somebody who <laughs> left it at the end and then it takes like five minutes to rewind the whole bloody thing and you are ready we're all ready the popcorn's hot and we're ready to go and then we got to rewind the tape it was incredibly annoying and then they used well, to charge they charged you. you for the they right. charged yeah, they you charged if you did <laughs> they would check it and if you didn't rewind it boom it was like a buck or something i don't know it was i, I can't forget how much it was but yeah yeah well, it used to annoy the heck out of me that was also one of the things I, I was reading last night, which I also was not aware of. You're talking about rewinding. I was, I'm talking about the fast forwarding is that the VHS came out, the VCR came out with it before Betamax, that fast forwarding, you could see the spot and Betamax didn't allow that. It was like Betamax had, uh, you had to fast forward and guess at the stop, whereas the VCR, you could see, you could press it while it's playing and see the scenes go by if you want to get to a certain spot in a movie. Oh yeah, could, scan the scanning. Yeah, the being scanning, able to, right? Yeah, scanning the image. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I remember that also. Yeah, like I said, so many things that I had just totally forgotten. We mentioned the laser disc quick, you know, quickly. The laser disc when D, I did not get, I did not buy one because they were also very expensive. And I think when DVDs started coming out, DVDs started you know replacing all the uh, VHS, and for a time it was you could still get both because VHS, you know, you could record the shows on DVD did not allow you. That was just for watching movies. Right. <clears throat> so one of the first ones that we got came the combo player. And it was, I think it was like the same price, the combo laser disc DVD. And I, I always wanted the DVD, the laser disc player, never got one. So we got, I, I actually bought a, I had like two movies on laser disc <laughs> just because I had that combo thing but it was like so cumbersome but it was it was fun to see i think mary poppins is one of them actually one of the oh, ones yeah. that i still own of yeah. the laser disc no i know but, when, uh, no. when dvds D's took over which i was excited about because again the quality was mm -hmm. was so high and sure. also the movies were um were in a letterbox letterbox format so you got the full aspect ratio right. of the image right and um and that was always a big deal to me because I liked seeing, I didn't mind it was squished on the TV. People thought they were getting robbed because they weren't getting the whole I'm with picture. You. And, right. Yeah. And that's okay. That's, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, personal, uh, personal taste, but I like the letterbox. So I always bought those, but even DVDs were kind of expensive. And they were like 25 bucks or something like that. And I, yes. and, and I liked by the time that happened, I was working for every single, every major studio in Hollywood doing audio, doing ADR. So I was on the lot, um, you know, of, of Fox and MGM, or which became Sony, uh, Disney and, and Warner Brothers. And if you went into their employee shop, which everyone did next to the commissary, there was a little store that had, um, logo merchandise from the studio they also sold all of their dvds at cost right so wow. i was able to buy dvds Dude. for less than <laughs> half up. price and i just wow. went and i practically spent my paycheck every time i went in <laughs> and i just loaded up on them and i ended up amassing a pretty huge collection of uh of dvds so which i, still I have, have a huge a, like, collection as well on yeah, me too, I, me too. I have a huge collection still here as well. Unfortunately, I did not get them at cost. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, no, that's a, that, that's a rare thing. And, you, you know, you had to be working on the lot. Um, obviously, you had to be on a studio lot to to have access to that, which is, you know, some you know, some VHS tapes are selling for like really nice prices now on oh. eBay because you can't get them anymore. Yes. 
Well, we actually so have, that's... my wife has a large collection, especially Disney ones, um, VHSs. Same, yeah, we have this, we have this special little closet. We call it the Harry Potter room because it's under our stairs <laughs> and it was all finished. It was all finished off and um, to house my DVD collection and her VHS collection. I ended up building uh, custom shelving inside of it. The VHSs are on one side, the DVDs are on the other, and it's really fun. And then we have all of our board games at the other right. end. So it's like our little entertainment box that we go in. Oh, and we're gonna, we're gonna have to do a board game uh, episode one time. We're gonna have to definitely. I'd have way, a why, absolutely. <laughs> My gosh. Yeah, it's right right on well, topic there. <laughs> well, anyway, our, our producer is relaying to me that we're out of time. <laughs> and, uh, oh, when did we get a so, producer? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> you know, he, he, didn't, he didn't mean that, Kelly. So, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> no. But anyway, we hope you enjoyed uh, this week's episode of uh, Pop Culture Retro. We had a lot of fun talking about this stuff. This was nostalgic for me, a lot of fun. But uh, oh, most definitely, quest- me too. Yeah, questions, comments, and if you, anyone has ideas for future episodes, please drop a line, and we'd be happy to do it. Oh, but, see, the timer uh, went off. I can hear it. Yes, now. I, I have to stop that. <laughs> or is that me? I don't know. I can't tell. But anyway, I think that was wide. But uh, again, thank you, thank you for tuning in, and uh, you know, drop us a line, like we said. And Ike, always a pleasure. Absolutely. Well, we'll see you guys uh, next time. See you next time. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to Pop Culture Retro, where no one was hurt during the making of this podcast. 